are in a portion of Chukat. We're in a portion of Chukat, as we all know. Chukat is talking, it starts, the, the conversation begins about paraduma, about a red effer. And we know we need to expand the whole cost of the red effer, which is the most, um, basically, one area is one of those things that everything you want to ask your rabbi and you didn't know, and you will never get an answer for that. So please challenge me on that. Go to your rabbi, ask him that question. What's the purpose of red effer? If they tell you, I would like to meet your rabbi, because they're not going to tell you. Then we are talking about Moses and Miriam died this week portion, tough. People complain, as usual. Moses and Aaron been told by God, take the stuff, talk to the rock, get the water out of the rock. And Moses talked to the rock and hit the rock. It seemed a mistake. God said, you're never going to go to Israel, either you or Aaron. Tough, tough portion. Now is Moses by himself. Aaron died this week portion. Miriam died this week portion. Try to imagine the loneliness of Moses alone in the desert with a lot of people there that not necessarily will understand it. It's not, not easy without support group. And, uh, and every time that they fight him, he doesn't even answer back. And then unfortunately, people get punished and die. And then they come to him. So fear is the way that the Israelites find God. Fear, fear. And then they get scared, they die, they go to Moses, Moses pray, pray for them. The disease go away and then everybody um, stay alive. That's the portion, rough Pasha. I know. As we're getting to almost to July, that's when the rough part should start next week. Balak, Azad Pinchas, heavy, heavy, everything is heavy. You know, not, not easy. But we need to make sure uh, that we, before we start understanding the red effort and the rest of the portion, we must understand what causing a person uh, spiritually to be afraid, what causing a person spiritually to be in awe, and what caused a person to be in love with the Creator. Because the purpose of life is truly that we'll be in love with the Creator. It doesn't seem like, uh, <laughs> what can I say? In a nice way, without judging anybody, it doesn't seem like the universe is going in that direction. You know, to be in love with the Creator. People in love with their addiction, not even with themselves. People not even in love with themselves. They're in love with their the last or what they want. I want it now. Like, hey, like my dog. You know, when the dog see me with the peanut butter, he's in love with me. That, I'm still looking for love dog. Those of you who know dog who can love you unconditionally with no food, I'm looking for one. Okay? People told me before I get this dog, dog has unconditional love. Let me tell you, those of you about to get a dog, it's not true. They don't have unconditional love. They have unconditional love when you have food. Okay? Yes, when you have your pain around you because you're more vulnerable to give you the food. So, but eventually, there is really no unconditional love. And people who want to challenge me on that, all those dog lovers, please reach out to me and let me know and teach me. Maybe I'm missing something. All right? It's got to be me. And if you're judging me, you have the right to judge me. But going back to our subject here, um, in my spiritual journey, which is many, many years ago, on its start, you know, I met all type of people in my life. I met people who are afraid of the divine, people who are excited about divine from a respectful point of view, and then I met the people who are in love with the divine. And the last one, there were not a lot of people like that, that in love with the divine. I met, I think, this one person, I can tell you his name, I tell you where he lives, he lives in Brooklyn, his name is Mr. Parnas. I call him, says, I call him Rabbi Parnas. He call himself Mr. Parnas. I call him Rabbi Parnas. The reason I call him Rabbi Parnas because every time I saw him, he teach me something. And I met him on a subway during Hanukkah on the way to Brooklyn. And I remember I had a conversation with him on Kabbalah while we were standing in the subway. And he's a Hasidic guy with the pace and streamel and everything. You know, the people that a lot of people judge usually until you have a conversation. And I talked to him, and he, and he always say, before you talk to me, I think 
If you talk to me in the subway, I owe you Dvar Torah. I owe you something for the Torah. And then he tells me something new. And then another. And then a third. I said, wow, this guy is unbelievable. I said to him, you heard about Kabbalah. I said, oh, Kabbalah, I love, I love Kabbalah. Then I said, can I talk to you about it? Come to your house. Said, of course you come to my house. I'm the richest person. I'm the happiest person. I am the most blessed person. I don't know if you know Williamsburg. I'm talking about 20-something years ago. There's an apartment building. Tall, long, you know, small apartment, and it smells bad. It's cheap. It's very poor. People live there. And many doors on every floor. I don't know if you know that feeling. When you can hear, whoa, whoa. Oh, no, no, that you hear years of walking. It's all, it's condensed, and the light, uh, not good. So that's what I'm going. I'm going, it's okay. Going to his house. I want to know the secret of this guy. What's his secret? Why is he so happy? Why is he so in love with God? What's the secret? He let me in. Show me his Hanukkah. Then I see one kid on the floor. A kid with mental disability. And another kid with mental disability in the crib. My heart is broken for a guy who teach me happiness, Torah, how to connect to God with love. Uh, everything is from God, but that's a lot. So then he take me to the crib. He said, come with me. I said, do you see these kids? He said, the parents couldn't accept that that's the destiny, so I adopted that kid. <laughs> I'm looking like, and then he look at the corner, the one, the one on the floor. There, yeah, he say, yeah, that's my daughter. And then I have other five kids, and he talk about it with love. I, I cannot do what he does because I'm not in that level. And I say, I hold him. I said, I'm gonna challenge this guy. I'm gonna make him. It's like I was so upset that I'm not that level. I said, I'm gonna upset him now. I'm gonna upset him right now, and he's gonna get upset with me. And then I know it's normal. I want him to be normal. And the guy don't want to get upset. Doesn't get upset. That's about what I do. I, I tell him, listen, uh, I have this book I want to sell you. It's going to be very expensive for you. That's a price. That's this. He said, okay, okay. Can, can I do payment? I don't have the money. Whatever you ask, I'm supposed to do. I know God sent you here. So, and then I look at him. I broke down. I said, is nothing bothering you? I'm not rude to you. I'm not speaking not nice to you. He said, no, that's how God wants you to speak to me. So when you, you, then I start crying. I said, I said, who are you, Mr. Panas? Rabbi Panas. And uh, the reason I'm telling you this story, because I had a good conversation with Debbie, and we start talking about spiritual journey. And Debbie say that a lot of time people look at spiritual journey and they try to be righteous, or they try to be holy, and they try to be special. But those people, so much trying that in the end of their life, they actually never made it. Why? Because they're busy with what's wrong with them. All day long, they beat themselves up. I did this. I was jealous yesterday. I gave up evil eye here. I think I stole a quarter here. And they, and they beat themselves up. Try to imagine a waitress. You go to a fancy restaurant. She pour uh, the water that she brought to your table on your pants. You are angry with her. She's upset with herself for what she did. The entire dinner... She apologizing for what she did. You said, can I see the menu? So no, no, first I have to apologize. How does that feel? Tell, right? When you work on yourself and beat yourself up, you not let the customer or God in that sense to look at the menu. You're not offering your goodness. We all have goodness and we all have bad. If you beat yourself up so bad that you no longer see the good, you cannot worship God from love. You're going to worship God from hatred. You're going to worship God from fear. You're going to worship God from, I'm scared. And this is has to change. It's, thank you, Debbie. And that's what Debbie showed me yesterday. Saved my life with, with the understanding. that I heard it many times, but to hear it again. And base it on some study. That, and the study go like this. You know, a servant who serve is a rabbi, is teacher, his mentor, whatever you want to call it, when he's busy with what's wrong with them, with himself or herself, they no longer can serve their mentor, rabbi, master, whatever you want to call it, with honor. Because they're busy with what's wrong with them. You can't do that. And that's what they turned into pleasing. 
That's what they turn into, how can I please, how can I please, how can I please? Because I want to hide what's wrong with me. But while you're busy hiding what's wrong with you, and you try to please me, you're still not with me. You still, you give me, but you're not with me. You give me the coffee, not because you care about me. You give me the coffee because you want to feel good. If you care about me, you would not be busy with what's wrong with you. And this is what we want to achieve in this week portion. We want to achieve a level of excitement about what's good about me. And every person this week has to make a list of what's good about you. Why God created you? God did a mistake? Forget about all the things that you do. Okay? Forget about it. You know, you did this wrong thing. We all do wrong thing. Nobody in this world is still alive who doesn't do mistake. We're going to do more mistake today. Not tomorrow. Today you're going to do mistake. But still, did you find the good things within you? If you find the good within you, through that, you can worship God with love. Only can find a good thing within you, you can truly worship God with love. But if you all day long find what's wrong with you, you're going to be busy with yourself. And I know doing Rosh Hashanah, you have Chatan or Pashan, you have to read your heart and say to God, what's wrong with you? Yes, it's a time of din. It's a time of judgment in Rosh Hashanah. And you have to deal with what? Your negativity. But look at it right now. Look at that revolution that Debbie showed me yesterday. That's revolution. When you do Chatan or Pashan, you can do two things of what, I've, what I'm asking for. Uh, uh, repentance for tshuva. You can say, you can say, I'm sorry for not getting excited about my spiritual work, or I'm sorry for all the bad things I did. Again, let me repeat. I am sorry that I wasn't excited about showing you the menu, or I'm sorry for the ice that I spill on your pants. Two level. I will work with the waiters to tell me I'm sorry I didn't show you the menu. Because I want to I wanna talk to you. So when you come to God and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't know what to do. I waste too much time. I didn't study enough. I didn't study. I didn't study. How much can you say that? Are you going to study right now? Are you going to study right now? No. So, so stop. It's fake. It's pleasing. It's fake. So what, what can you do? Oh, change. What are you good at? What are you good at? You know, some people are good at certain things. You know, in a, in the, there is this show... MasterChef that you see on TV, I think it's on TV, MasterChef, is it? Is it here? MasterChef is in America. So there is, in Israel, MasterChef too. But in Israel, they make fun of the chef. I love it. You know, the chef actually talk about each other. <laughs> I love that part. I don't know why they don't do it here. And one of the chef is lazy. He cannot start doing anything before 11 a.m. It's a weird, weird. And everybody tells them, listen, if you want to learn some stuff, you got to come in the morning. There's some secret stuff. We're doing together. You have to show up. And they, I, I love the, the arguments. They say, I'm not. I'm, that's not what I'm good at. I'm good in this. I'm not. This is the one area I will never be good. So I look at it. I, say, I, said, I, said, I show it to them. I said, wow, this is unbelievable. He accept the fact of the area where he's not good at, but he know where he's good. Do you know where you're good? Focus on that. Now take that. That's what you take it to Hashem. That's what you take it to God. That's what you take it to the Creator. That's really what it needs to be. You cannot all day long, Chatanu, Pashanu, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Yes, you have a lot of things wrong with you, but what are you good at? Tell me this one thing you're the best. You're the best. Give me your best piece. You know, like in MasterChef, they tell you your best dish right now. Yeah, but I'm not that good. Get out of here. They don't want to talk to you anymore. The same thing with God. Don't talk to God about how bad you are all day long because it's boring. It's no love there. But if you talk to God, hey, listen to me. So when I have, let's say, customer or something like that, you know, all those things, God, I'm not good, I'm not good. There's nothing to work with them. They're pleasing me. They try to impress me. So when you talk to God, he can do it. Same way, he can do it. You, you fool. Uh, that's why there is three levels to, work, to worship God. Fear, respect, and love. This generation has to work on love. That's what we're born to do. We're always going to be a sinner. We're not going to be as pure as Moses. We're not going to be as holy as Rabbi Shimon. Get used to it. If you're a woman, you're not going to be as holy as Sarah. You're not going to be as pure as Rahav. Forget about it. Just give it up. Okay? This dream, give up. Now focus, what can you be? What can you be? Well, you can love the Creator toward your good things. So when you cook something for your friend, you put all your love in it. You bring coffee, all your love. You give a right, all your love. That's the test of this generation. 
what missing in this generation? You look around you. I mean, you don't need to need me to tell you what missing connection. People are not connect. You know, you see it. You see it even. Uh, somebody told me they went to a music festival in Miami. I said, it was disconnect. It was space. He, he called it space, my friend. Because it was a space between people. So what do you mean space? It was space. Elia, it's not the COVID. He tell me. It was not connect. We use alcohol. We use drugs. He said we use everything. Still, people not like a puzzle. You look at puzzle, the pieces match. You know what I'm talking about? There's, there is a pieces, but here it's not connected. What happened? People are working on themselves, the spiritual one. They beat themselves up. What's wrong with me? I'm too jealous. I have too much lust for food and sex. I have too much thinking. What's happened to my brain? Shame on me! Shame on me! Boom, boom, boom. They hit the head. Then what left for spirituality? Zero. So please, this week portion, we're going to read why, has to do with purify yourself, but not just in physical way or in a thought way. Understand you have a lot of good things to offer the universe. Make a list of all the good things which are good about you and start making that list apply to the universe. Whatever you're good at, everybody good in something. You came here with a gift and you're going to share that gift. You, you cannot be fake like you share your gift and it's not your gift. You cannot do that because that becomes pleasing. That's the definition of pleasing. When you give, but you actually want to receive. Definition of giving, you're born with the gift. You want to share it. Don't forget this. Anyway, I want to jump right into the Zohar. It's going to be a little bit deep. And it's talking about paraduma, red heifer. What is a red heifer? Basically, a cow, okay? that were never used to carry anything on it. Never been, it was a very special condition to that cow to be totally pure and kosher. And uh, it's only used by burning that cow, basically. I mean, don't burn it alive, but burn that cow. And the ashes from that cow has been used to purify all type of negativity you're ever going to have. Nine of them will use, and the 10th one will be used when the Messiah will come. The last one will be when the Messiah will come. That's the last one. That's why all people consider not pure. Because we cannot purify our body. We cannot purify our body because we don't have red heifer. And we don't have high priest. So when you go into hospital, you become unpure. Why? Because there are dead people in the basement. There are dead people. So wherever you go to wherever there is dead people, you're already unpure. So all of us consider not pure in the eyes of God. It doesn't mean he doesn't love us. Okay? When the Messiah will come, they will burn the last cow. That will be the tenth one, ten Sephiroth. Now you know why, because it will, those of you know Sephiroth from Keter till Yesod was the ninth Sephiroth. Malchut is in the end. Malchut is the bottom. We didn't fix Malchut yet. Well, that's what we are. <laughs> Look at us, stuck together. Chatanu <laughs> Pashanu. We got to fix that cow and uh, fix. That's only when Messiah will come. Why Messiah? Because Malchut is the one area that it cannot be dealt with until Messiah will come. I cannot tell you a lot about it. You can find it by lecture of Tikkunah Zohar. Now, I need to take you now to the Zohar, to Rav Ashlag actually, in the Zohar. And Rav Ashlag asks, what is this red heifer? Why when you go to any rabbi, and please challenge me, I'm repeating, challenge your rabbi, challenge me. The way you can challenge me is to tell me we found the rabbi who can explain paraduma, red heifer. Unfortunately, most rabbis say if it's written in Chukah, and they write about it from the Pshat point of view. Chukah means that's the law. You don't ask any question. But the Zohar asks, Rabbi Isaac Luria asks, Kabbalists ask question, even give an answer. It's, so it doesn't mean there is no answer. It means if you don't study the Torah the way God wrote it, there is no answer. If you study the Torah, the Torah has four levels. Atzilut, for emanation, the way God wrote the Torah. Okay? The way God wrote the Torah is absolute, meaning there is no story in the Torah at all. When you read story, it's not really a story, it's all codes. And you need to break the code to Tikkun Azor, to the Zor. You gotta break the code to the Ari. You gotta break the code. When you read the Torah, the most people read in Asiyah, in the world of, of action, it's at the bottom. When you read it in the bottom, then the Torah is more about story, Laban, Esav, Jacob, Abraham, Adam and Eve. Those are stories. The story are just clothing to the real meaning of the Torah. But you cannot get the real meaning by reading Asiya Torah. It's a, it's a joke. Pinocchio will sound better. I'm sorry to insult. I'm not saying those words. 
Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai say like this, whoever read the Torah the way it is, you know what he said? Tifach Ocha, may he die. It's very scary, right? Yeah? Yeah? Parashat Balotcha, Poshat Balotcha. He cursed the people who read the Torah the way it is. It's, so for years, I'm, Rabbi Shimon, like, let's relax here. I cannot say that Rabbi Shimon is relaxed, Rabbi Shalom, but why? Because he's the most merciful person in the world to speak like this. What does that mean? And he said it's an insult to the writer. When you don't try to understand the writer, which is God, it's an insult. Because you think they talk about red effort. I mean, come on. Like he said, come on. So he, he said, can you make an effort to study and understand what really God meant? And now you're going to go deep. So, oh my God, this is a different, different story. You know? So now we're going to try to explain it the best way I can. Okay, this is Kabbalah. This is pure Kabbalah. And when I say pure Kabbalah, it's meaning a little bit deeper than the usual just uh, restriction and right and left and center and uh, God bless America kind of, uh, you know, come along, you know. Pirush, explanation. This is Rav Ashtag pure about the Zohar. And for me, Rav Ashtag, just to let you know, Rabbi Yudha Ashtag for me is the Messiah himself. You know, when I talk Rav Ashtag, when I'm in Rav Ashtag, it's for me the Messiah. Why is the Messiah? Because how, how? How in 1930 you can come up with a deep explanation like this that works explanation from 2,000 years ago? How do you do that? How do you do that? You, can, you have to be a prophet from 2,000 years ago to get to that level of explanation. Unbel just unbelievable. Him, Rabran Zwein, the Ari, the Ari, when he go to that, and he bring a lot of things from the Ari, it's, it's something else. So that's why when I go to Israel, you see me excited. Of course I get excited. I meet, I meet the Messiah, he just cover. He cover himself for me. He doesn't want to meet me because I'm not yet in that level yet. I'm not in love the way he was in love. You know, that's what we're missing. This person was in love. His Torah was in love. He was in love with the Torah. He was not afraid of God will kill him. And they didn't care. How old was Rabbi Isaac Luria when he died? 38 years old. Was he sick all his life? Yes. Yes. Kidney stone, hernia, every disease in the book. <laughs> and he wasn't. I'm going to give the main student of the Baal Shem Tov was sick all his life. He went to see the Baal Shem Tov to get cured. Never get cured. Become the head of all Hasidim. So... Don't talk to me about, you know, I love when people come say, I'm a spiritual man, I feel really good, I make more money and my golf game get better. Stop with that. It's not about that. It's about loving the creator. Paraduma. Red effort. Pirush. There is two levels within Malchut. I need to explain to you, so I'm not going to leave you behind. Don't worry. One is Moshe Aita Biyom Dalet the Maaseh Prashid. One of level of Malchut is how Malchut was and I'm sorry for the people at home, it might be a little bit deeper. Please listen to it three, four times. Listen to it carefully. First, first is how Malchut was in the fourth day of creation. If you look at the fourth day of creation, you're going to see that God created the sun and the moon in the same day. But when God talking about the sun and the moon, he doesn't truly talk about the sun and the moon. The sun represents the Eran Pin, and the moon represents Malchut. What does that mean? Bina, which is a higher level sphera, was sharing the energy to the Eran Pin and Malchut. The Eran Pin is right column, Malchut is left column. Malchut kaf small the Bina. So that means on Wednesday, the sun and the moon were equal. It was not different. Zeran bin Malchut was equal. Not like in our time, the Malchut is below Zeran bin. Not like in our time when the moon get light that reflect to us that come from the sun. So right now it's not the same whatever happened on the beginning of Wednesday. The second aspect of Malchut, so that's the first. So the first aspect of Malchut, when Malchut and Zeran bin are equal and both receive direct light from Bina. Second level, I, I Second level of Malchut is after the moon becomes smaller. I don't know if you know. The Midrash say, the Midrash say that God said to the moon, you know, if you complain why there is two rulers in one heaven, why don't you make yourself smaller? It doesn't mean a punishment. It means the Malchut has to become smaller. Then what happened as a result? Malchut start to receive energy no longer from Bina, only directly from Zeran Pin. So there is good things about the first condition better than the second. Because in the first condition, Malchut was complete, receiving the light directly from the source of Bina, not Nidzer and Pin. The bad thing about it, 
if you do it this way, that Malchut receiving light, it's called Chokhmah, light of wisdom, without light of mercy. And then light of wisdom cannot shine without light of mercy. So it's darkness, even there is intensity of blessing is there. So you don't want blessing to be in your life without you can enjoy it. That's called Chokhmah without Chasadim. And we call it darkness. And there is good in the second condition. When Malchut receiving from Zeran Pin, then you can reveal the little bit that you have. So yes, you don't receive as much as light as you receive from Bina. You receive very little. And through that, and through that, you reveal a little bit of yourself. What is that connect to the red F? The red F. Now, first let me write to you. How does that connect? When you write para, that's how you write para. Para means cow. Or, okay? Cow. So as you can see, in the word para, okay, 280, and this is 5. Okay? This is stand from something called Mansapach. Mansapach is the five final letters, say Dari, of the Hebrew alphabet. Last Mem, last Nun, last Sadik, last Pei, last Kaf. Hebrew letters, 22 letters, plus five final letters. Five final, which means if you write the Mem in the end of a, of a word, it will be looking like this. You write the Nun in the end, look like this. You write the Tzadik in the end, look like this. So in the end of every word, look like this. What is those letters do? They are the letters that we lost in Mahamad Arsinai, Mount Sinai, for immortality, for rejuvenation of who we are. Five is the amount of letters. You see, one, two, three, four, five. Those are the five letters. So para, red effer, mean, I mean, the color red, I don't need to tell you. Red means strong left column, which is, in a way, light of wisdom. So para duma, he said to us, the Zohar, and this is from the Ari, para duma, red effer, okay? is the condition A. What was condition A? When the Malchut used to receive light directly from Bina, it's dangerous. So that's left column of Bina. There is intensity of light. And only the spiritual, righteous, pure, holy people can survive. Uh, I'm not thinking some of us are part of this, any group like that. So how do you survive? Okay? So what do we do with the, with the red effort? I think I, I told you. We burn it. What do you burn? Exactly. You burn this left column. Because why are you burning that left column? What, what, is, what, is, what is the idea? It's a... It's a like this. I'm reading now from verse 24 in the Zohar of Chukat. Why do you think in the Torah and all the other things that you have to do with the Torah? Why do you think you commit a sin? Why? Where do you have the desire to commit a sin? Where does it come from? Did you ever ask yourself? You're doing something wrong, you know it's wrong, and you're doing it anyway. What's wrong with you? You idiot. You know it's bad for you, and you're still doing it. Like my friend showed me on the cigarette when they smoke. Uh, I don't know what it says there, but surgeon or something uh, forbidden to smoke. And he looked at it. He said, I can't believe I'm still doing it. And he smoked. It's written bad news there. Very bad news. Eh. And he lighted. it. What happened? What happened? Because from... The Malchut, remember, when Malchut used to be in the A, which will receive all the light, the negativity loved to yonek. Uh, it's on, yonek means breastfeeding. The negativity is like breastfeed from that area that used to get a lot of light and they want to get that light. Who they use? The loser. Who is the loser? Human. Us. They give us, in your idea, some idea to steal, to kill, to cheat, to be not nice. To, to, to scream, to get angry, to be jealous. And through your emotions of feeling that, you become greedy, selfish, evil, pleasing. And then you go and you do the wrong thing, and then they get benefit. That's how they get the benefit. So when you burn the red effort, it's a symbol that you burn that channel of light, source of strong light that can go to negativity. Okay? When you burn it, here in the physical world, this is only doing it in this world, but it's not really what we want. Then we can weaken 
the power of the left column and through that weaken the power of selfishness and weaken the power of the impure system that are chasing us to be used as an agent to bring them light. And then they leave the human being and then the human being become pure. So the human being cannot be ever, ever, ever become pure without red effort. Cannot. So why we call it Meidida? Why do we call it the water of Nida, the water of uh, period? Huh? The water of impurity. And by the way, if you want to know the halakha, the law, the one who purified you become unpure, and the one who is unpure become pure. It's a weird thing going on. Here. So the one who comes purified is a, is a very holy person. He does it to you, he become unpure, because he touched it. He touched it, you know? So right away. So it's never end. You get to pure somebody. Yeah. Some commentaries say, because if you feel pure, you become unpure. If you feel unpure, you become pure. It's kind of cute. So when you mix it with the water, so he's telling us, Rabbi Shimon, in verse 25, you not only purify the human being. This thing in your conscience, when you read it this week in the Torah, you have to think that the whole world will become pure from that desire. You think you can fix yourself not to have lust. You think you can fix yourself from not having that negative. You can. You need a light. You need something to come and help you. So Rabbi, actually that was said by Rabbi Shimon's son. I'm sorry I said Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon's son, Rabbi Lazar. So Rabbi Shimon listened to his son talking. And you know what he tell him in the end? He said to him, there is a problem with the words you're saying. He said, Father, what have I done? He said, Rabbi, Amar Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon said to him, son, Lazar, his name is Lazar, Lazar. Is very next to Rabbi Shimon in the Quran. I said, you did something now that nobody can speak after you. Because what you say now, it's so high and so perfect that nobody can add anything. So he's, he gave him compliment, and at the same time, you gave no room for adding anything. So Rabbi Shimon could not add anything after him. Can you imagine? What you just heard, it's called Sitra Torah. It's called forbidden part of Kabbalah, what you just heard. But don't worry about it. All the only thing that can happen to you, you're going to forget it tomorrow or even tonight. You're not going to remember that, even if you try. You're going to look at your computer, read, and then remember. So it's a, that's part of the Sitra Torah of Kabbalah. But the important for me to share it with you, because I feel most people don't know that in every section of the Torah, there's so many secrets, so simple to understand. Now I understand the red effort. Now I understand it's to do with the five final letters. Is there any question among you before I move on? Don't raise your hand. Just ask. Um, yeah, please. Explain the breastfeeding thing again. <laughs> <laughs> breastfeeding was... Uh, uh, I don't know a lot about breastfeeding, but I will tell you that the clipot, the clipot get feed uh, by us, like we breastfeed the clipot. But we are a message of the clipot. You don't get angry when you choose to. They make you angry, so you can feed them. That's how it works. I mean, if I would... Have the time and the money and everything. We have to create a cartoon movie. The people understand this universe. That actually it's not us to choose. There is entity around us, Clipot. They, if, if we don't give them energy, they die. So they convince you to do the wrong thing so they can benefit. So you, they breastfeed from us. Okay. Very sad. Very sad. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So what do we do? Right? What do we do? And this is taking us. How do we start? We don't have red effort. What's the best thing you can do? What is the best thing you can do with your life right now without the red effort? And I found this also here in Zohar Hukat. Shocking. Like, shocking that I saw it and I didn't see it. And it's like this. It's in verse 70. In, in, in the third day of when she fasted. I don't know if you know the story of uh, the Megillah. You should all read it. Esther fast for her people not to, not to die after Amon put a decree to kill all the Jews in Iran, in Persia, not in Iran. And she decided to fast and then go to the king with no permission. And those days, if you go to the king with no permission, they take your head off. Doesn't matter who you are. Head off. She, not only she went to the king, she wasn't that gorgeous. Three days of fasting. So it's a, she was three days of fasting. 
three days of she's dying almost, right? Like that. That's how you go to the king. But of course it's cold. Only cold. So it's only cold. So what does that mean? In the third day. So she comes with her spirit, not with her body, say the Zohar. The Zohar teaching us to show you that you have to come with the spirit. But what kind of spirit? And then it's written, an Esther dressed with kingdom, Malchut. Kingdom in Malchut. She dressed with Malchut. Code, all code. She dressed with Malchut. Mao Malchut. How do you dress with Malchut? You take the sphere of Malchut and you dress it? What is it? Maybe you should say with beautiful clothes. Maybe Malchut means beautiful clothes. Say the Zohar. No. The Zohar disagree. Rabbi Shiva said, no, not true. What does that mean? She took the Malchut from above the real sphere of Malchut and she dressed with that. It wasn't clothing, it was energy. She dressed with it. But why? What, how, how come a woman, first woman ever, ever in the Bible, to take Sphira and put it on her? First woman. Why? Why she? From all women. It was Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Leah. was big. Why her? Why her was married that? I'm continuing with verse 70, chapter 2. You know when you want to know why? She was quiet. You want to know the secret of Esther? She was quiet. Women love to talk. Women love to talk. About what? You never know why. But they love to talk. You want to understand the subject later, but they love to, when it starts, the title comes after. It's not like men, first the title, then the conversation. With women, and I'm sorry if I'm hurting people, you have a conversation, then they add it to a title. So you ever see a man and woman start a conversation in a restaurant, it's very funny, I always like to watch. So when a woman talk, you see the man get nervous because he doesn't know where to put it. Which, which title is it under? <laughs> hey, honey, are we talking about the money, the tax? The house you want to want, the car, the thing. No, no, I, I, I don't know. I just want to talk. And it's talk. And you see the man is getting tired like he doesn't know where it belong yet. So he doesn't know where. It's very funny. I love to watch. So you want to know Esther's secret? She zip it. How do we know it? Because it's in the Megillah. Esther doesn't say where she comes from. She didn't want to tell people she's Jewish. But I'm not and we study. Call me Shomer people shall know. Tell us the Zohar, we study. Whoever able to keep his mouth shut and his tongue and not to talk at all, not to talk, not just not to talk bad, not to talk, is for sure going to have the sphere of Malchut give him Ruach HaKodesh. And he become prophet. And of course, whoever allowed the mouth to speak bad, then if he speak Lashon Hara, that's a problem because at that time the snakes start to control him. Speaking Lashon Hara, speaking bad about people, it's not because it's bad morality-wise. It's bad because you connect to the snake. And for that reason, in this week portion, you see that the snake attacked the Israelites because they complain about the food. So now we understand a big secret here. What is the big secret? We understand that basically the whole idea of this week portion, as I say about love, and about red effort to remove negativity, and because we don't have really the effort, the best thing we can do is to shut up. How do you be spiritual? Just be quiet. Just be quiet. Before I leave, I remind everybody that on Thursday, I have a, a webinar, am I saying it correctly, uh, for half an hour. Everybody is welcome to listen. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. All the best.